Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Whether you're joining us here, whether you're watching live. Um, another day, another Ramadan, another fast. Alhamdulillah, it's already day five. I think <laughs> we're going on for day five. Um, but what, one thing just to start off the session, uh, as we as we enter the session and we enter this this experience in Ramadan of actively remembering the uh, divine, actively remembering our creator. A hadith, a saying of the Prophet Muhammad um, comes to mind uh, when, when we think about this. And it's so powerful because it just shows the effort that we put in, the uh, striving that we do towards Allah, how that's reciprocated by Allah. And the hadith goes on and is in length of, of things in terms of like whether a believer or someone comes to uh, Allah or to the divine by a hand's length, Allah will come to that person by a arm's length. But what I really liked of the hadith is that whoever comes to Allah walking, and this is a hadith Qudsi, so it's one that's uh, said in uh, from Allah's perspective. So the hadith goes, whoever comes to me walking, I will come to them running. And so this uh, small, humble walk that we're doing uh, as we go slowly through the 99 names over a course of a month, it may feel like a really slow journey. It may feel like we're, we're not making too much progress, but we're slowly, slowly, slowly walking towards the divine, knowing that we're walking towards the divine that is racing towards us, that running towards embracing us. So let's keep this in mind as we continue um, that we are not bereft of Allah or the divine and that the way we are going about this is in a manner that Allah himself or himself has lifted up in terms of coming towards us uh, in a much more rushed fashion. So yesterday we covered three names, Al-Muttakabir, which was the majestic, Al-Khaliq, the creator, and Al-Bari, the one who brings into existence. And we really uh, derived from this. So there was an example that was given the analogy of a, a fabric um, or a cloth. And so we're all of one unique divine cloth and creation initially, just you know, created here in this majestic, by this majestic uh, entity that's there. And then that uh, cloth is then cut into separate pieces. That cloth represents al khalik that it's the creation itself. Then the cutting into separate, piece, uh, into separate pieces and just being taken out, that is by al-bari. But we think of it, if we, if we draw the analogy back that we have this shared creation, this shared div, uh, like divine origin that's there in this fabric. And then we are cut into our respective species or our respective wherever we might be in life, wherever we might be assigned to. And then, then subsequently we are shaped from that, from the cloth that's just been cut and then put to the side, cut and then put to the side. We are then further shaped from there. But while we're, while in our diversity, we might look like different pieces of cloth, we might be different amounts in here and there, we still recognize the majesty, the mutakabir aspect of our creator. And not only do we see ourselves as any less, but we see all of ourselves as equal before God. And so the creation, as I mentioned, the big fabric, the big divine cloth, that's al-khaliq. Then you look at the cutting into separate pieces, the, the one who brings into existence that you're no longer just a part of this fabric. You're, just, you're, you're, you're something more. You stand out. You're still a part of the fabric in, in, in nature, but you stand out now. And that's al-bari that, 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 that brings into existence. And today we'll talk about al-musawwir, who's uh, the shaper, the one that gives that, that, that specific assignment with regards to what, what species, what would you look like, things like that. But in this, we do lift up the last name of Al-Mutakabir, of that majesty. And we recognize that we're from that same cloth. We're all from that same cloth. We might look different, we might talk different, whatever it might be, but no less in any doubt, we are all uh, equal at, at the least because we've come from that same cloth. Whether we are humans, whether we are from any other part of the natural world, whether we are an inanimate object or an animate object, we all at our divine 
origin have the same uh, have the same uh, place of origin there. So Bismillah, let us uh, begin the uh, session then with the recitation of the Asma'il Husna. Um, I am just going to share my screen here in just a second real quick. And then we will begin. I had uh, received a couple messages asking about if we could um, do a recitation at the end. I don't have a problem with that. Um, so for, for folks who are interested in just having that, I, I'm happy to provide that at the end there as well. So uh, let me go ahead and share my screen here. All right, Bismillah. And just give me one second here. Oh. All right. So one thing I wanted to say is that before, whenever we recite these names, um, before we actually do recite them, uh, I say, uh, you know, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Hu Allahu ladhi la ilaha illa hu, hu, you know, huwa ar-Rahman hu ar ar-Rahim. And so uh, I wanted to be, be mindful and be inclusive of the fact that some of us might not know what, what, what this means. Um, so uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, of course, is just uh, the invocation of in the starting something in the name of Allah. So uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So we actually lift up the two names of Allah that, that come first here, ar-Rahman and ar-Rahim, as is in the Quran and as with any, any starting of anything there and then with regards to uh who allah who la ilaha illa who that uh hua is the pronoun it's the it's the arabic pronoun for he but it's also a neuter so it's 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 beyond a gendered but the uh the translations often you know just take it to a he but you know we know allah is beyond gender but uh he is allah the one um who allah who la ilaha illa that there is no other worthy of worship no other uh, god before allah um and then who and then we say the divine names and allah is all these and more so bismillah let's go ahead and let's start there bismillah La ilaha illa hu ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Al-Malik al-Quddus al-Salam Al-Mu'min al-Muhaymin al-Aziz al-Jabbar Al-Muttakabbir al-Khalik al-Bari Al-Musawwir al-Ghaffar al-Qahar al-Wahab Al-Razak, Al-Fattah, Al-Alim Al-Qabid, Al-Basit, Al-Khafid, Al-Rafi' Al-Mu'id, Al-Mudhil, Al-Sami, Al-Basir, Al-Hakam, Al-Adl Al-Latif, Al-Khabir, Al-Halim, Al-Azim Al-Ghafur, Al-Shakur Al-Ali Al-Kabir Al-Hafid Al-Muqit Al-Hasib Al-Jalil Al-Karim Al-Raqib Al-Mujib Al-Wasi' Al-Hakim Al-Wadud Al-Majid Al-Ba'ith Al-Shaheed Al-Haq Al-Waqil Al-Qawi Al-Mateen Al-Wali Al-Hamid Al-Muhsi Mubdi Al-Mu'id Al-Muhyi Al-Mumit Al-Hayy Al-Qayyum Al-Wajid Al-Majid Al-Wahid Al-Ahad Al-Samad Al-Qadir Al-Muhtadir Al-Muqaddim Al-Muakhir Al-Awwal Al-Akhir Al-Zahir Al-Batin Al-Wali Al-Muta'ali, Al-Barra Al-Tawab, Al-Muntaqim, Al-Aqo, Al-Rawf, Malik, Al-Mulki, Al-Jalali, Al-Ikram, Al-Muksid, Al-Jami, Al-Ghani, Al-Mughni, Al-Mani, Al-Dhar, Nafi' Nur, Hadi, Badi, Al-Baqi, 
الوارث الرشيد الصبور بسم الله so today's names we begin again as we recite these names we just if we create this aura for us for we start this day off in the remembrance of Allah in the remembrance of uh, just all that that is that is there and good for us here and how we start this gathering really does uh, get affected by how um, how we go into that mindset and so bismillah let us start today with uh, the three names that we're covering the three names you may you saw them in the in the slide here but the three names we cover are al musawir al ghafar and al uh, sorry al musawir al ghafar uh, and sorry we got one here al qahar yeah uh, it's a little early morning <laughs> so al musawir we we talked a little bit about the shaping of the uh, the creation we we talked about the cloth the cloth is there al khaliq and then it's cut up into different pieces in terms of here here's just a general cut of a fabric here you go here you go that's al bari and now we're going to the shaper, the 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 one who gives shape to each piece of cloth that is there, and so this divine name gives things their final shape. Uh, Al Musawir has been defined or translated as simply the the one who gives shape. But of course, as we know, these words have such a deep meaning that there's so much more we can take from these, and it lends all things, or the name lends all things their form. It teaches us from this name as well uh, that. Out of the divine names of Al Khaliq, Al Bari, and Al Musawir, Al Musawir stands closest to the world of material manifestation because we see exactly what has been created beyond the uh, the, the the supernatural, beyond the spiritual realm. It is it is now manifest. Uh, the root of Al Musawir brings about meanings and connotations of forming, shaping, fashioning, creating, illustrating, making a picture to uh, like describing and uh, for actual creation. And so Al-Khaliq is the one who shapes destiny and Al-Bari is the one who then creates this harmony for the creation. And then Al-Musawwir is that painter, that, uh, that drawer that brings these shapes and pictures into existence. Um, and so what we, what we get out of this name is that it teaches us that regardless of what we are, who we are, what we look like, where we came from, what, how, we, how we talk, what, whatever our differences might be, that we don't look down on each other, what our status symbol is, what, what our, how much uh, our annual income is, things like that, all these different things that we use to differentiate us and create barriers between one another, that this name teaches us don't look down on others and also don't look down on other creation. You know, sometimes we're like, oh, that's a dumb dog, or that's this and whatnot. So, you know, we, we're, we're a bit mind, more mindful of the other creation that's been created because they too have been created not just from the divine, but from that fabric, from that fabric. You may, you may not see the match between you and another animal or you and another, like a tree or something. But when you look at the, uh, the, the genetic overlap that we have, that, that we share almost over 96% of our genes with a strawberry, you, you know that we're a lot more connected to this earth than we are uh, in terms of how we, if we just judge it by our looks. So you know that uh, all of this, the, the world, everything in it, the, the cosmos, all that is there. It was originally just this, this, this emptiness, this, you know, we can, we can describe it in the spiritual sense of this fabric. And al musawir after seeing the fabric come into the different shapes, takes each of that piece of fabric and shapes it according to its means, according to what has been set for that piece. And that piece referring to us, that piece referring to different objects, this, you know, a small uh, plant or a small animal or whatever it may be, or another human being or a whole race of people that is from al musawir And there's a purpose for all of that. And so it lifts up this verse of the Quran that says, uh, we have not created you um, in, in but that you may come to know one another. And we created you so that you come to know one another. And so this is part of that getting to know Allah. We, we said this hadith in the, in the first uh, session here with regards to the one who knows themselves, knows their Lord. And we think about Al-Musawir as we end this whole session and this whole series as we go, that as we learn more about our Lord and our, and our God, we start to learn more about ourselves. But as we start to know other people, as we start to know other entities, other creation, we also find 
in that knowledge and more uh, closeness, drawing closer to God. So people shouldn't be dismissed as such. Everything that's around us shouldn't be dismissed as such because we are all in some way, shape, or form reflections or divine sparks from this original piece of cloth, from this original tapestry and uh, put on this earth. And so we, we, we really uh, bring, bring about this, uh, this teaching of parody that comes with this. And then lastly, this just in practical sense, al Musawwir really helps our creative side, our artistic side, and helps us express our creative powers and become masters in our craft. And it, it guides us towards success because it shows uh, that this, that, you know, when you invest in something, whether you're, whether you consider yourself a creative person or not, you don't have to be a creative person in terms of I can draw well, or I can uh, write well, or I know graphic design, I know this stuff. That, that doesn't mean you need to be someone who uh, is the, that this name can apply to, or that you take meaning from this, because we all in our own lives give shape to so many things, whether we are artistic or not, we give shape to the, the impressions that people have of us. We give shape to how people perceive other things. We give shape to so many different things here and there that we are not cognizant of. So this name helps us take a pause and say, what all do I really shape? Do I, do I shape how my kids, how their day is? Do I shape how my day is? Do I shape how uh, the, the, the routine of others is? If I'm a manager at work, how do I shape other people's lives? Like if I'm you know, a physician or something, you know, I'm obviously shaping uh, so many other things um, for people in terms of their well-being. So we, we are mindful then of what, what do we shape? Because we're all shaping in some way, shape or form. We're, we are all uh, cutting some fabric and all, you know, making things unique. What are, we, what are those things? Uh, and so it allows us to be mindful, but it also allows us to d uh, jump into that creative side because this is something that Allah has uh, incorporated as part of Allah's name, as part of Allah's attributes in terms of the one who shapes, the one who has this creativity to give each thing their due and to give each thing their their divine shape. And so just thinking about what, what is in ourselves, whether you're an artist, this might be easy, but whether uh, you're not art artistic like me, you think about, you have to think a little bit deeper. And it's really beautiful when you start to think and be mindful of what all are you truly shaping around you. So next we talk about Al-Ghafar. It's a beautiful name. Al-Ghafar refers to, and it's translated often as the forgiving, the one who forgives and uh, the one who forgives not just once, but time and time again. Al-Ghafar is the one who is there to forgive when something needs to be forgiven, and the one who forgives time and time again in this infinite ki kindness, and the one who is there to forgive when uh, before something even is about to happen. That, that's the all-encompassing type of forgiveness. And this for type of forgiveness is not just a what we have in our, uh, in, in our worldly sense, in the sense of, uh, someone forgiving us just by by saying it by mouth, but it's a forgiveness that covers mistakes, that's proactive and covers bad deeds, covers slip ups, covers bad thoughts, and it helps render them ineffective. So it's not just if you do something bad to someone and you're like, hey, do you forgive me? It's like, yeah, I forgive you. And that's it. This one actually goes and becomes your advocate on the other side and says, yeah, you know, I forgive you, but also let's work on a few step plan uh, and let's 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 put things back in your court and and let's lift you back up because oftentimes we're we're in a pretty low state after we feel like we have to go ask someone for forgiveness or whatnot if we if we've done something bad and Al Ghafar lets us keep that self esteem, lets us uh, stay up, um, and lets us you know recognize that we 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 shouldn't deprive ourselves of our own self esteem. Uh, in, in, in those moments, we, we should feel maybe if it's some kind of remorse and whatnot, we should make an effort to, for, uh, to uh, ask for forgiveness, but it shouldn't reduce our self-worth. We shouldn't go into a self-reproach. Uh, and so every human being we know, uh, myself first and foremost, every human being makes mistakes. Uh, we can't be free of mistakes, otherwise we wouldn't be human. This is just part and parcel of uh, our creation, of just us being in this world. But the key is that we don't insist on making mistakes. We, we try our best to not make a mistake, you know, unless you're going about life and actively trying to make a mistake. We are trying not to be, we don't want to insist on making these mistakes. Rather, the important thing that this name lift up, uh, lifts up and goes to is how acknowledging and admitting and owning up to our mistakes is actually a deep virtue and a sign of wisdom. 
that when we don't no longer run from our mistakes, we no longer shy away from them. Uh, someone like me who is so averse to conflict and so averse to uh, confrontation, anything like that, or, or something bad that happens, I will completely remove myself from it. And, and, and that's not what, what we need to do. What we need to do is actually own up to making a mistake and own up to that. And because then uh, forgiveness is preceded by recognition. Sitting with our wounds is really crucial. And we, we brought this example of time and time again of the Japanese art form of kintsugi, that uh, we might be shattered pots, we might have broken something, but what, what, what we can be after that, what we can be just because we uh, lost something or just because we're not in the same shape or form that we were when we were first born or we messed up something, doesn't mean we can't be something better. And so we anneal those wounds uh, with, with this divine forgiveness, with this gold that shines and makes us even better than we came before. And the difference here, we, we, we uh, will lift up a name later on of Al-Ghafur. Um, but the names of Al-Ghafur and Al-Ghafar, they have the same root. Uh, and these root, this root covers the meaning of forgiveness, granting pardon, uh, apologizing to watch, but also of watching over and of covering. There's a difference, though, that Al-Ghafar keeps this door of forgiveness open the, and invites us to return even when we've broken our promise a thousand times. Um, as I mentioned, it is like the person, uh, you, you think of the story of the prodigal son uh, in, in the Bible, but it is like uh, this all-forgiving um, deity. It's this all-forgiving uh, just aura that invites you to come back even though you can, you make mistakes that that door is always open so you don't you don't feel uh, you don't feel um you, you don't feel like you're isolated or anything like that that Allah's door is always open for you taking forgiveness so but al-ghafur on the other hand which we'll cover later again but just just to mention here for benefit that al-ghafur penetrates and touches the deepest part of our heart the place where our most grievous offenses the ones that uh, our greatest slips and secrets really lie that we at our hearts are not really comfortable with. Um, and they, it goes to the worst that uh, was done to or by us, and it reaches that which we believe could never be forgiven. So there's some things that we've probably done in our lives that we don't tell our spouses, we don't tell uh, our closest confidants, uh, and we're just really guilty about it. But we, we, we've, we've sought forgiveness and whatnot, but it's still something that is not sitting well with us. And Al-Ghafur, which we'll come to, is, is one that goes deep into the heart is the one that is there and, and helps heal that wound specifically and is very precise. We brought up the, the example in the first session of Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Ar-Rahman being a wide sky of mercy that you can just, you, you, it's just bestowed upon you, it's there, it's accessible, you see it, you can access it. Uh, and Ar-Rahim is a laser focused like sun ray that comes down and just warms you specifically. In the same light, Al-Ghafar is this ocean of just forgiveness that's always there for you. That, that pool that is always there for you to drink from. But uh, in, even if you are you feel you're not worthy, but it's always there. And then Al-Ghafur helps penetrate deep into you and helps resolve whatever it may be that we're work, that, that is burdening our heart. So both names carry a basic quality of forgiveness, but also of covering, of healing, uh, and healing these inner wounds, um, moistening and softening those uh, really, those inner cracks and those cuts uh, and those tears that we've got, and it closes them with a divine bomb or a divine neosporin of sorts uh, that our water uh, and our, our that our water of life, that our uh, true you know substance can continue to flow because when when a part of our body is cut, there 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 is not only swelling but part of us just we shut down a little bit. We 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 take that time to rest. We take that time to 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 heal uh, as as bad as that cut or whatnot may be or that wound. Um, but uh, Al Ghafur and Al Ghafar specifically help really to uh, patch up that wound and to help us continue to carry on. So the lessons from this name, we aim to soften our heart. These uh, these these uh, these uh, names uh, help us soften our heart uh, with Al Ghafar. It helps soften that which might harden it. Uh, if we uh, you know we we, we are always. Uh, maybe in terms of making mistakes or wronging others or any type of deal here, we are often uh, committing these things. And then in subsequence, we don't forgive ourselves for slipping up or anything like that. So this name allows us to be mindful of others' mistakes and of our own, and as well as being mindful of what we hope for in our creator. So if someone wrongs us and we can't forgive them, 
we go back to thinking that we're still in this world of which the ocean and the sky is as mercy the the sky is mercy the ocean is forgiveness uh and we are not forgiving this person what what are we expecting from our divine creator uh, and if we carry this divine quality, we are capable of true forgiveness, of forgiving faults, and we don't see them as such. Like, like the Creator doesn't see the the Al Ghafar doesn't see our mistake as completely descriptive of us or who we are as people, and gives us a chance to improve and actually works with us to improve. Uh, this 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 name actually hearkens us to then be mindful of how do we treat other people when we offer forgiveness is just, hey, yeah, I, I forgive you. And now I don't want to even see your face. Like, get out of here. That, but, and, and then your impression of that person is still the same. Like, I jerk. Like, you know, all right, good, good thing you're out of the way. Or do you really see their humanity? Again? Do you lift that back up? So just thinking about that as we, uh, as we incorporate this name, it's a really powerful name and one that we always have access to, but one we often, because of just how we are in life, how we're, we're kind of, uh, molded by society as well, uh, and, and and just shaped by society on, on on from out from the exterior. We oftentimes forget this aspect or for, forget this aspect here. And lastly, here we go into al qahar. Al qahar is the one who overcomes, the one who defeats everything, uh, the Almighty, the Invincible. And this root carries a, uh, carries uh, the meanings of subjecting something, of subjugating, of conquering. Um, really powerful language of overpowering um, and of overcoming. And al qahar is a name that helps us to overcome the outer struggles as well as the inner struggles. It also helps us uh, counter those and overcome those things which are bearing down on us, which might just you know be part of how we are going about this world. It's kind of our ego, our outer attachments, our sense of attachments. It helps us rein in those things so that... Uh, as, as, we, as we are going through this, we, we come to recognize these other attributes. So all these attributes work in sync and, and, and they help work with one another, but they also help us in terms of how we come to know Allah. So Al-Qahar, as I mentioned, <clears throat> helps us really overcome things on the inside, bad things on the inside, things that we might let go into extreme. So things like curbing our anger, things like mastering our appetites and desires, Things like overcoming our inner enemies and our inner just demons that are just kind of going at each other and to forget all of those concerns that, that are here, uh, that are inside and outside that take us away from Allah. Not to say that if you have a family, if you have someone that you're obligated to or your job or something like that, uh, not, not to just say like, oh, I'm just going to remove this and I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm, I want to be close to Allah. No, there's a reason that you have a family, that you have a job, that you have all these things. It's because that, that's a means of accessing the divine. But to cut those off is not, it's not accessing the divine. It's done in terms of the inside, that overcoming those struggles on the inside here. So if your family gives you a headache and you're like, I'm going to overcome them and I'm just going to get away from them and remove uh, that stress from my life and just leave. No, that's not, that's not the case here. This is uh, with regards to taking away those inner thoughts, those inner um, feelings that really take us away from the remembrance of Allah and from knowing that we can access the divine and to rekindle that relationship. So just real quick in terms of closing out with Al-Qahar, uh, Al-Qahar is like a flame. It burns out everything in our spiritual life, in our internal life here, um, which uh, we are not really in need of. So we, we have so many things that we've attached ourselves to in our world, mind, body, and soul, all of these things. And there's so many things we, we can really do without. There's so many things that we can take use uh, to, to, to just declutter a little bit. So this is a tool of purification and of cleansing the heart. The, the power uh, and love uh, connected to this al qahar that it's not just a, a strict person going and wiping and cleaning and doing this stuff and like, you know, just completely changing or, uh, you know, overcoming and overpowering has really strong connotations that might have some red image in terms of there. But uh, al qahar actually has that red in coming from love, coming from a divine power, a divine love. And it's illustrated in the concept of a fire that heats. Uh, and so this is this fire that's really heating up uh, this meat. And so you think this meat that's heating up uh, and the juice that's extracted from it. Uh, al and Al-Qahar is in this process triggers us uh, this, this longing and this burning passion. Uh, and regardless of what we're doing in life, that no matter how busy we are, that longing for Allah always burns in the depths of the heat. Nothing can extinguish this deep yearning. And it's always there. Al-Qahar is that fire of love. It's always burning in us. It's uh, no matter how bad things get, 
Uh, and it's that which connects us to light. It takes out those things which aren't a part of our initial substance and that we can do without. It extracts those, those, uh, those juices that might come, in, uh, come about and helps us get back to our natural form. It really purifies us like a furnace does to iron uh, or to, to any kind of metal. It burns that identification with uh, things that wound us in terms of shame, humiliation, insult, uh, and it lifts up that true being. It helps polish that and cause, it calls us to radical self-purification. So with these names, we think about, as we close out here today, we think about uh, not just being shaped, not just being shaped and given form, but we're given form in a world uh, by a creator and by a creator that is, uh, that is modeled by forgiveness, that has created a sky of mercy, an ocean of forgiveness, and uh, now uh, gives us the ability to overcome the shortcomings we may have because we know we're going to slip on some things, we're going to uh, you know, step on some thorns, al qahad is the one that allows us to come back from that. And so as we close out today uh, in our zikr, um, let, let us go ahead and just be mindful of these things. Let us be mindful of each of these things. What can we overcome? What can we uh, be forgiving of? What do we need forgiving of? And then also, uh, what do we give shape to? What do we really give our, our passion to? So bismillah, let us, uh, let us close out today with our with our zikr. And again, at the end, I will do the asma'il husna one more time, but you're, you're welcome to uh, hit, hit the sack if you, if you need to sleep or go on. Um, but bismillah, we'll, we'll, we'll start with the, the remembrance of Allah here. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Al Musawir, 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 Ya 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 Musawir. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Al Ghafar, 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 Al Ghafar. Ya Ghaffar, Ya Ghaffar, Ya Ghaffar, Ya Ghaffar, Ya Ghaffar, Ya Ghaffar, Ya Ghaffar. La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Al Qahar, Al Qahar, Al Qahar, Al Qahar, Al Qahar. Al Qahar, 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 Ya 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 Qahar, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. So brothers and sisters, Zakla Khair for listening to the 99 names uh, and the, the liquor. Uh, again, as I mentioned, I'm just going to give uh, a one more uh, recitation at per request on the uh, the 99 names of Allah, uh, the Asma'il Husna. But let us remember these names all of these names, but these names specifically of Al Musawir, Al Ghafar, Al Qahar, as we uh, are reflecting on our day today, and what do we give shape to, and what do we think about? So, Bismillah, let us let us begin on this here. Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, Hu Allah, Ladi. La ilaha illa hu ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Al-Malik al-Quddus as-Salam 
المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر الخالق الباري المصور الغفار القهار الوهاب الرزاق الفتى العليم القابض الباسط الخافض الرافع المعز المذل السميع البصير الحكم العدل اللطيف الخبير الحليم العظيم الغفور الشكور العلي الكبير الحفيظ المقيت الحسيب الجليل الكريم الرقيب المجيب الواسع الحكيم الودود المجيد الباعث الشهيد الحق الوقيل القوي المتين الولي الحميد المحسي مبدي المعيد المحي المميت الحي القيوم الواجد الماجد الواحد الأحد الصمد القادر المقتدر المقدم المؤخر الأول الآخر الظاهر الباطن الوالي المتعالي البر التواب المنتقم العفو الرؤوف المالك الملك ذو الجلال والإكرام المقصد الجامع الغني المغني الماني الضار نافع النور هذه البديع الباقي الورث الرشيد الصبور Jazakallah like khair, brothers and sisters. Have a blessed day, inshallah, with the remembrance of Allah. And we'll come back tomorrow to three mornings. May Allah bless you and the rest of your fasts, if you're fasting, and the rest of your day as you go about this Ramadan. Jazakallah khair.